Time and again, travel proves to be the best teacher. It shatters stereotypes, opens your mind to new experiences, makes you believe in the kindness of strangers. And somewhere along the way, it turns you into a better person and maybe even a storyteller. In the last week of 2019, I was in Bodoland attending Dai Ching Festival on invitation by Bodoland and Assam Tourism and I learnt more about this region than any history books ever taught me. Google would have you believe that this region Bodoland is rife with protests. But being here experiencing the warmth and hospitality of the Bodo people, it was quite the contrary. I was touched by the love and kindness of the people here and it ached me to see how misrepresented this region was. So let me show you a real slice of Bodoland through Daijing festival. But before we go ahead with the festival, let's address the burning question. Where is Bodoland exactly? No, it's not outside India. Bodoland, officially the Bodoland Territorial Region, is an autonomous region in Assam, India. It is made up of four districts on the north bank of Brahmaputra River by the foothills of Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh. The region covers an area of over 8,000 square kilometers and is predominantly inhabited by Bodo people and other indigenous communities of Assam. And what better way to serve as an introduction to a new culture than attending a cultural festival, right? Right after we landed in Guwahati, we were off to Bongai Gao to experience Daijing Festival. Daijing is a river festival celebrated for 12 days every year, from 27 December to 7 January, on the banks of Ai River near the Hagrama Bridge in Bongai Gao. The word Ai in Bodo literally translates to mother. Dai stands for river and Jing stands for bank. So, Daijing literally translates to river bank where the festival is hosted. So, what can you expect at Daijing festival? Every evening during the festival, the stage comes alive with performances from local artists. Also, this year, celebrities like Mika Singh, Vishal Shaker grace the stage. And traditional dance performances here are also a sight to watch. You can find a range of adventurous activities here to keep your heart pumping. There's helicopter rides, paragliding, hot air balloon and river rafting. Since a festival can never be complete without traditional food, at Daijing festival, you can find traditional Bodo, Santali and Bhutani food, among other variants. There are plenty of options with nearly 100 food stalls set up. Try the rice cakes when you're here. There's some interesting art exhibitions every year set up by local artists that's worth checking out. And of course shopping, if you are planning to shop for some unique local finds that's represented you of the culture of Bodoland or Assam, chances are that you'll find it here. My favourite part of the festival was when the sun went down and the lights came up. I could see the whole ground lit up in a riot of colours and people of all ages gathered around the festival grounds for celebration. It was fun and filled with laughter, a celebration of life. Riverside camping is available in the festival grounds which would be the closest stay for Daijing festival. We stayed at Signet for the entirety of our stay in Bongaigao, probably the best place to stay in the region. <laughs> 